Dave. What are we doing? How was your day? Dude, my day's been long. I was at work all day. I went and got my tooth fixed. Right in there. Two years I haven't had a tooth there. And now I'm, I've got a fresh toothy in there. So I'm like all dialed in. Had some pizza. Hung out with the family for six minutes. And then Cameron showed up. And it's time to work on his tundra. This thing is awesome. I don't know if anybody out there in Dirthead land has seen it yet, but Cameron has a really cool first-gen Toyota Tundra. I don't know. I guess we just got to drag this thing in the shop. I've been moving junk around. I haven't finished any projects since you guys saw last. Um, so we're going to be kind of cramped in there, but we should be able to knock out some A-arms, coilovers, leaf springs, tires, and probably a dozen other things that Cameron has drug along with him. Come on in. This thing is super clean. Probably way too nice to be here at the dirt head shed. <laughs> but um, he has he has been kind of hustling on this thing on the side for quite a while. It's got wheels and tires. It's yep. got some Nomads and Falcons on it. Uh, I helped him put a ARB bumper on it about a year ago. So what else is going on with this thing? Yeah, so this truck's kind of been inspired from several people within our friend group from Harry to my buddy Basil um, to John. Um, they've all kind of helped inspire this build on this truck. There's not a lot of parts as you guys probably know for the first gen Tundra. Yeah, he's saying inspired, but that's a bunch of that's a bunch I'm of inspired. Bolt. Basically, you get one option for this Tundra <laughs> and you bolt all of that option on. Exactly. So, so we have the option yep. for this thing. It kind of has like a Bilstein setup um, up front with some different coils. I have always liked these Bilstein setups. Is this a 5100 setup, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yes, this is one of those builds that there's not a whole lot of options for. So you basically get what you get and you don't throw a fit as they say yeah so we are going with stage two basically on this truck which is going to be pretty rad we got a whole truckload of parts here and we're going to pull it into the shop and start tearing it down let's do it Jesse's here. He's been he's been behind the scenes on a bunch of the stuff. He helps out every time there's like last minute, got to get things done. So he's here to help bust out. I don't know what we're doing first. We're waiting on a few parts, but we're gonna start tearing this Toyota down tonight and see where we end up. It's probably gonna be down tonight and back together tomorrow. But Jesse should be here to help both days and. Hopefully get to go out and rip this. He said he was going to get to jump this thing over no. the highway. <laughs> I, was, I was told I could jump it like the Duke's a hazard. <laughs> so, well, do you guys want to see what I brought you? It's pretty cool. Um, no, talking about jumping cars? Yeah. No, no, no. Let's We're not. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, is, this is my baby. Don't make me jump it. Look at all these boxes. Yeah, I, I love I boxes I of stuff. I normally don't tell Dave everything that no, we're I doing. Know that. I know exactly <laughs> what you do and don't do. <laughs> Yesterday, Cameron's like, um, uh, we're just doing a arms and shocks and a roof rack and another set of tires and what else? What did, what did you not tell me? Uh, no, just leaves. That's it. Oh yeah, beavers. <laughs> Sick. All right, let's unload it and start tearing this truck apart. It's like Christmas. Oh, dude, opening that box, there's goodies in there. Oh, boy. How about I just film and you guys unload? <laughs> it's cool. You actually can get off the shelf Devers for this thing. Yes, sir. Look at that happy sandwich pack of goodies. Looks like a big it's like a lunchable yeah a big leaf sandwich <laughs> yeah the sherpa stuff those are the dudes that race culture four like stock class right yeah yep that's good i didn't know they actually made parts i thought that was just like a race team yeah no i think uh alex and those boys over there 
They uh, make roof racks so they can go racing. Sweet. You got to pay the play, right? Yep. Yeah, Cameron was always like really liked these tundras. I, I think they're neat, but I didn't really notice them on my radar ever until my friend Harry Wagner bought one. And he did sort of this like pre-runner overlander camera guy um, rig out of it. So I think that is where Cameron got the inspiration. Um, they're cool trucks. They have a V8. It has a V8, right? Yep. It has a V8. It's got like big rear axle. It's got pretty bulletproof front suspension, just like a Tacoma, but a little beefier. And I think the first time I saw it, Cameron swat came by the shop and he was like, hey, dude, we got to put an ARB bumper on it. It'll take like 20 minutes. <laughs> I did and, not. And uh, <laughs> no, I think you said five minutes because that's what most manage management type of people say. Um, so anyways, he brought it over and then he was like, oh yeah, it's not for this truck. They don't make an ARB bumper for this truck, but they so do. and so on the internet says that you can throw one on from a Tacoma. So like eight hours later, we had this thing mocked up and sort of on the truck. I had to weld brackets on the frame. We had to cut metal and grind metal and repaint and, uh, look at it now. It's just super cute. Like it was meant to be. Yeah. Uh, no, it's cool. It's uh, it fits the truck pretty good now. He's got a come up winch in there. Um, he's got super bright heckin' lights that you could see when he was pulling it in because he was like, "Hey, dude, check out my lights. I'm I'm a bro, dude with lights." Um, <laughs> it's getting there. This is definitely going to need like the little bit of lift that we're gonna give it right now and some bigger tires because right now the big huge front bumper overpowers the little tires. <laughs> So this thing's already got a Bilstein 5100 strut, I believe it is. Um, this is like a pretty cool shock that allows you to move a little C-clip and get a little more lift out of it. It looks like, what well, are these Dobinson springs? Yeah, so this thing's already got basically like your entry level leveling kit. It still has stock upper arms, it still has stock lowers. Uh, I think it's got an upgraded sway bar end link and some urethane bushings in the steering rack. So. Cameron's totally like done step one on this and the deal we're doing now is basically step two and that's going to allow a little more little more suspension travel we're going to get a little more clearance for the big tires and probably just end up with a stronger setup all around for when he's down in Baja chasing dirt bikes and surfers and all that stuff um, that's kind of the goal for this truck is it go anywhere cameraman rig so it's got to be kind of like simple and tough and parts that are like they're either going to last forever or they're going to be easy to replace if you need to that's why you'll see when we're getting into this we're going to be using like factory toyota ball joints and factory toyota bolts and things like that i'm starting with the best best of them this is going to be lower control arms for this thing these are from solo motorsports this is a cool like southern california company that's building legit like desert racer stuff i've known them for doing um parts for broncos i guess for for like trucks like my ford like mom spaghetti you can get all sorts of solo parts for those and for ford rangers but apparently they got into this market too so Cool lower control arm. It's the stock length from pivot to pivot, so it doesn't widen the track width. But what they do is they offset the ball joint, and that's supposed to help get you a little more caster and get the tire out of the firewall. Cameron's over here switching it up. We got two different brands on control arms. But I kind of approve. These are SPC arms, which are pretty cool. This is, these are sort of considered like a problem solver arm. They didn't come out trying to be the baddest and most off roady but they kind of did a better job than most everybody right out of the gate. These things, um, they have like a urethane bushing back at the frame side, and then it uses a factory Toyota ball joint for the spindle side 
but it's actually slotted so that you can adjust the, the um, camber and caster and all that stuff right there. So these things are rad. <clears throat> this is one of those companies that's been making parts for forever and uh, they always seem to make really good stuff. These are Arizona Desert Shocks, and it's a company that's been doing desert race stuff for quite some time now. They make really cool, like, rebuildable shocks. These things look like a two and a half inch stainless steel body, um, fully serviceable, adjustable preload on them. You got, uh, I don't know if this is adjusting compression or rebound, but adjustable reservoirs on it. So, super sick shocks. I'm a little jelly, I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is all really cool stuff that I would like to talk to the guys at ADS about shocks for mom spaghetti It was actually on my radar because that thing doesn't really handle that well and these guys have been on my radar for a long time, so hey, Is that number two number two axle shaft boots broke Yeah, this one is too sick Cameron's gonna be buying some axle shafts tomorrow <laughs> You should get on the horn now. <laughs> if your name is Dave, and you knew this was going to happen, clap your hands. <laughs> Morning. I came out here yesterday for a couple hours, and cut and ground and chopped and finally got those lower control arm bolts out, which was a pretty big win. It was frustrating how hard they were to get out because all the bolts look good but it has like a sleeve inside another sleeve and they had started rusting so all that's out of there this morning we're gonna go back here and we're gonna install those left leaf springs and I think um, we got a whole pile of parts showing up on Monday or Tuesday so we're just kind of prepping for when that like wave of parts shows up Good work, Toyota. I love what you do for me. I guess it was like the development of like Toyota working with Bilstein. And I recall back when I was like lowering trucks and stuff back in the late 90s and I'd see these trucks come in with factory Bilsteins on them. I was like, that is rad that you can like go to the dealership and order a truck that's got like factory good shocks. And look at this, 180,000 miles. It's still on the truck. It's still got nitrogen charge. It's like a really good quality product. So it's pretty neat that Toyota developed this, like the TRD packages and kind of forefronted some of this like factory off-road pack package um, options. So this one did its job. It was on here for 115 years and we are pulling the stock shocks out, stock leaf springs out. We're gonna upgrade it all finally, but good job little yellow shock, you did well. Actually, mine go. We put in a couple hours on a Saturday and we got the leaf springs are in, the shocks are kind of started and I'm just sort of figuring out where the remote reservoirs are supposed to mount. It looks like the reservoir hose is smashing into the exhaust so um, we'll probably end up having to cut the tailpipe and like reroute some stuff there but all in all it's pretty good. Leaf springs didn't fight me. We got some new parts on order like bump stops and things like that so I don't know, kind of picking away at it. This is kind of fun. Two hours here, two hours there. And tomorrow I'll probably come in and start messing around with those uh, upper ball joints on the spindles and get those kind of rolling. But good day.
Got a few little trinkets to figure out, but whatevs. That's kind of how building trucks goes. It's never super straightforward. We're gonna slam these arms together tonight. We're gonna put these together with a ton of anti-seize so that this thing doesn't become one in the next few years. And I think that's gonna be that's gonna be it tonight. under here messing with the shocks and figuring out where this reservoir hose and mount and all that stuff's gonna go and if you look in there the reservoir hose is like crammed right into the muffler so I think what we got to do is we we kind of need to at bare minimum cut the tailpipe off right here and like figure out a way to reroute a downpipe there but I think what I would rather do is cut it off up here at this ball and socket and essentially just make like a whole new cat back system. So we've got like a two and three quarter pipe at this ball and socket. I'm going to cut it. We'll figure out a muffler that I've got up on the shelf that'll sound cool. And then I think tomorrow when I'm at work, I'm going to stop by the muffler shop and pick up a three inch universal passenger exit 45 degree tailpipe. Um, they're really cool. It's like a mandrel bent three inch tailpipe and I used to use them all the time when I had a muffler shop and I think in this situation if I can get a muffler that sits inboard a little bit farther and a big fancy tailpipe that I can route where I want it um, we should be able to knock out a pretty cool like high performance cat back on this make room for the shock reservoir and everything will end up being super happy. side went in pretty good it should be done deal so I think we're doing pretty good for tonight um, we're gonna get cleaned up got piles of Toyota parts showing up tomorrow Cameron's got all these other overnight things that are gonna show up as well so tomorrow it's gonna be kind of go time again so I don't know good night didn't get a ton done but we're moving forward picking away at it picking away at it Night 11 team, dude. man. We're killing it. Yeah, dude. This bolt-on lift kit's just flying together. Oh, my. Um, I bought this new thread repair kit so that I could fix the shock that I messed up the other day. Um, cross thread's a strong thread, as they say. Um, I had to fix it after I said that. What are we doing tonight? Tonight is day 119. Um, and I think it's time to put control arms on this puppy. We got rad new uh, axle shafts with some high angle boots. We're going to do that. We're going to bolt some coilovers in this thing and then hopefully start welding up these knuckle gussets because because um, Cameron just keeps buying stuff and showing up with it and being like, dude, we're throwing this on. Should only take 74 hours. Um, anyhow, we're going to throw some arms in this thing right now. Pop those axle shafts in. Do some welding. It's going to be good. Ready? Think it'll come apart? Mm -hmm. Yes! Yes! We'll see if the other one goes back in. <laughs> but that was good. It actually came out. Yeah, it gave it a nice. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we're canceled. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why?
<laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Peanut break. Yeah, hey, you wanna know how to kill production? Go buy some peanuts. Oh, they're so good though. Hazel? You just gave your dog spicy peanuts. She don't care. She's not even faced. No. She eats cat poop for a living. <laughs> 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 Cow. Look at that. Six days later. Well, six afternoons later. We have an <laughs> arm and another arm and an axle shaft. A arms are in, uppers and lowers, and the axle shafts are done, so we are going to go tackle the spindle project. Cameron ordered up these uh, gussets. I'll show you how that goes and start figuring that out. So go set up welding junk and drag parts over there. So this is this is the Toyota steering knuckle. Um, pretty standard. These Toyota knuckles are kind of thin appearing up here where they have the casting that like 90s over. So I think in some racing applications this thing has been known to break. So there's a company there are companies that have built these like gusset kits. Some of you have heard about spindle gusset kits and some may not have. Basically, it's just a piece that welds on. It's supposed to sort of stiffen this. I guess it stiffens it like laterally this way. So we're going to go ahead and clean all this stuff up. Make sure that I get a good clean weld surface. I'll get this thing started and fit. It actually is pretty close. I don't know that it's like super ready for like TIG welding yet, but all in all for coming right out of the box and going onto this spindle, it's actually a pretty decent fit. Check that out. Fresh rubber on the old Tundra as well. Uh, it had basically a 33 on it before um, in the metric sizes or equivalent, but these ones are a 315 75 16, what Falcon Wild Peak AT3W. Really good tire, extremely heavy duty for this kind of light of truck. I think these are, it's pretty standard to run these tires actually on like a Cummins Dodge or something, but. On this thing, they should last forever. He's rocking the Nomads on it. These are kind of a fresh new wheel that's got a retro look. And it looked good already, but the tires were kind of small. So I'm really, I'm curious to see how it's gonna look once we get it on its weight with 35s on it. That's what this is, 315, 75, 16 is the equivalent to like a 35, 1250. So really cool tire, um, very heavy duty. It should work good on here. All right, guys, so might have gotten more parts for the rig. Um, let's see what see what Dave thinks. Remember we talked about parts for this thing? For what? What parts that you're showing up with that you weren't expecting me to have to install? Like, new ARB intensity lights. Yeah, I think I'm going to start mowing away on these guys. <laughs> wow, they're funky looking. But ARB always makes rad stuff, so. Those are nuts. I don't doubt that they're really good lights. It's sort of like this, like, early 2000s, like, I don't know, forward thinking sort of Toyota. And somehow they made, like, those lights look right in place on that truck. So, good work. I think this knuckle is ready to go on the truck. I'm going to go see if I remember how it all goes together. It's been in the shop for like three weeks now.
control arms are in, shocks are in, that knuckle gusset thing, all this stuff is done. Basically just got to tighten up a couple bolts, put wheels on it, and suspension is wrapped. Uh, Cameron and Jesse are going to start unboxing that roof rack and see how much work that thing is going to be. But hopefully within a couple hours we'll be test driving this thing. So Cameron's first gen Tundra is finally out of the shop and looking good. How do you like it, Cam? Oh, I'm stoked. Came yeah. out even better than I thought it would. Cameron's super stoked. This truck is now ready to go and take on trails and haul camera gear and go to awesome places. It still needs a little bit of work as far as getting the gears and lockers done in it. So it should be heading out to the other side of the state to go get that done here shortly which that'll be cool. That was just sort of like wrap up this whole package. It's got new suspension. It's got big wheels and tires on it. It's got the roof rack on it, fancy shocks all the way around, like basically race car control arms on it. This thing is sick. Um, it has now been on the road for, it's actually been on the road for like a week. So what do you think on it, Kim? Yeah, everything works to works together really well. And yeah, need, need a little bit of fender trimming, but overall just stoked. It's pretty rad. I mean, when we put it together, we lowered it down. The front of this thing was kind of low, so it actually went and spent an entire day at the alignment shop getting all those SPC ball joints dialed in and adjusting those coilovers. So it's looking good. It's got some miles on it, and it'll be around for a long time. So you guys should see it on the channel quite a bit more often now that it's this capable. Thanks, guys.